Welcome back to H-Town Rush, everyone. All this month, we're celebrating the LGBTQ plus community. And the Montrose neighborhood here in Houston has supported every color of the rainbow for decades. So this month, uh, Brandy, you looked back at the neighborhood's history. This is cool. Yeah, and we're talking about a part of Houston that is about 110 years old, if you can believe that. I mean, it has evolved a lot in that time. From the rainbows of Westheimer to the leather of Ripcord, the art of Rothko Chapel to the bands at Numbers. The Montrose neighborhood has a unique look and feel. Such a mixture of, of different things and, and different people. You could describe it as colorful, like the flags you'll spot all over what's known as Houston's Gaberhood. It looks very different than it did when it was first platted in 1911. It was originally an upper and middle class neighborhood. Brian Rydell dug into Montrose history. Purely out of personal interest. When he moved to Houston in the late 90s. When did it become gay? It's a very interesting question to try to answer. What do you take as the beginning of it being gay? Artists started moving in in the 1930s, so that's one option. But Rydell thought the creation of LGBTQ-friendly businesses would provide a clear illustration of the neighborhood's evolution. Starting in the 1950s, it's a very interesting ride. He mapped out the city's gay bars and institutions, like Art Renz. That would be today where Katz's Deli now stands on Westheimer. Green dots mean the business is open, blue indicates when it opened, and gray locations are closed. But it wasn't until after 1969, in fact, the 70s, that Montrose became the dominant center. Gay rights opponent Anita Bryant's visit to Houston galvanized the queer community in 1977, resulting in Houston's first Pride celebration in 1978. During that week, a coalition of activists and advocates held town meeting one. One of the organizations that came out of that meeting was the Montrose Counseling Center, which is us. Now the Montrose Center, it's a vital resource for LGBTQ people all over the greater Houston area. It's incredibly important, maybe now more than ever, to continue to have places like the Montrose Center that are exclusively um, uh, LGBTQ affirming. Since its founding more than 40 years ago, it's only grown and adapted to meet the community's needs. Just as its namesake neighborhood has. The history of Montrose is not done. I have to mention it can be really easy for those of us who aren't LGBT or Q to think of Montrose as a, as a safe space yeah. for the Alphabet Mafia, but it really never was. I wrote a whole lot more about that part of the neighborhood's history mm. on KHOU.com. There's so much to cover. Like I said, it's tough to cram 110 years into two minutes. It's so informative, though, and very important part of the city's history. Absolutely. It really is.